What is this? Have I discovered the holy grail of pocket 4K camera rigs? So as promised, here's my Pocket 4K rig, and as promised, it's not really going to be a review of the Pocket 4K itself because, again, everyone and their mother has done one. I just want to show you what I have found for my setup and why I think it's actually just about perfect. Of course, there's going to be a few issues here and there. Um, there's definitely things I'm always going to want to be improving. Like any of us, we have living camera rigs, you know, that they're, they're never the same from one month to the next. <laughs> but this one is pretty close to ideal for me. And I want to show you what makes it so great and why it is such a great um, option on a budget. Of course, if I could throw in $20,000 into a camera rig, this probably would not, well, no, this would not be what I would put into it. But for the price, it's just about unbeatable. So let's get a little bit into it. First off, I've got, of course, the newer uh, camera shoulder rig, like uh, I've reviewed before in the past, which you can find here. Um, this rig is about $70, and it really is fantastic. Um, so on top of the shoulder rig itself, I've got a quick release plate to this tripod here, the Magnus VT4000 in this case. Um, it allows me to be able to take it straight off of the tripod and right onto my shoulder. So for run and gun setups, this is insanely amazing because I mean, just boom, I'm on shoulder rig and boom, I'm on tripod. Absolutely insane. Okay, and then I've got this matte box here just to uh, make sure that, you know, there's no real shadow going into the lens itself. It's really nice to have there. Um, I've also got a follow focus ring on my, uh, let me see, this is my Yashica 28 millimeter. And as you know, I do love my vintage lenses. And of course, vintage lenses, when they're talking about photography lenses, they don't have uh, follow focus gears. So we got to put a gear on there. And then I've got my newer follow focus right here. And it works absolutely fantastically. Um, it really is great. Okay, and then I've got the small rig pocket 4K uh, cage right here. Absolutely love this cage. It is a great cage for the price. I don't remember the exact price. I'm putting it up now after researching it. So that's the price right there. Okay, and it's a really fantastic cage. Um, this handle was not part of it. This came with uh, the cage I had for my, or still have for my A6300, which I'm shooting on right now. Um, love this handle, but I would recommend, okay, so I basically have the same exact, same exact setup at work, my day job. And uh, occasionally I actually bring this one in to be a secondary cam for it. Um, but it's really great because I've got almost the same exact system uh, at work. And the top handle that I have for that one is also a small rig, but it's got a rubberized grip. So nice to have. I would recommend that you go for the rubberized grip if you're not buying the cage with a handle already in a kit. Um, but yeah, the rubberized grip is definitely a nice uh, option to have on there. Okay, and then I've got the small rig uh, Samsung T5 SSD holder, which goes directly into the camera via this cable. Um, now, the cable management here, I do want to find some ways to improve. That's where it's a little bit of a living rig right now. I definitely want to improve the cable management here because it's a little sloppy. Um, but I've got the uh, uh, USB-C going directly into the camera there. And now let's talk about this HDMI cable. What's it going to? It's going to this Atomo Shinobi. Oh my gosh, I love this monitor. I love the Atomo Shinobi. I cannot express that enough. I made the 100% right decision going with this. I was considering using my uh, Lilliput uh, A7S um, as the monitor, but then I was like, it's not very bright outdoors. And I know uh, one of the big, okay, so this is the biggest reason why you want a monitor like this externally on this rig, okay? Allow me to show you. Once you're on, you know, when you're on the camera, uh, on the tripod, it's not so bad. But when you go shoulder rig, uh, that, that, that monitors, it's right there. I don't want to be sitting there filming like this the whole time, you know, and that gets uncomfortable and you're going to be creaking your neck and you'll, you know, be in a lot of pain after the shoot. <laughs> so you definitely want an external monitor with this setup. So I went with the Atomo Shinobi and again, so glad I did. It is $300, which is about double a lot of the budget monitors you can find around this size and everything, but it's worth that $300, I promise you. It is 10,000 nits of brightness, I believe, which means that you can see it in daylight. I was shooting a promo the other day with this monitor, and it was perfectly visible, perfectly visible 
in daylight. It was insane. Now, I, I know I'm going crazy about this, but the Atomos Shinobi, I'm so glad I basically doubled the price of the monitor that I was gonna buy because I was gonna go for something again like the Field World, uh, which is about 150 bucks, or the Lilliput, which I already had, you know, but I'm so, so glad I went for the Atomos Shinobi, which is a 5.5 inch monitor. Uh, it, it has, you know, LUT capabilities, it has focus peaking on it, all these kind of things, but on top of that is the brightness. The brightness is the number one selling point to me. I can see it perfectly all day long. Runs off of Sony NPF batteries, which is the same thing I've got the camera going off of, which we'll get to in a second. The Atomos Shinobi, I, I'm not sponsored by Atomos in this, I guarantee you, but it is so worth it. If you are looking for an external monitor to put on a camera like this, go for the Atomos Shinobi. Okay, there you go. A uh, little PSA out of the way. Okay, but I've got the Atomos Shinobi going straight HDMI into the Pocket 4K itself. And then I've got it on this newer uh, 12 inch, I believe it is, Magic Arm. And I absolutely love these Magic Arms. They are, you know, newer, of course, you know, obviously I'm a little bit of a fan of newer. Now again, they're not like one of the top brands or anything like that, but I use their lights, I've used their camera rigs, and I'm yet to be disappointed in their products for the price. Again, $20,000 camera rig, probably would go to something maybe a little bit different. But this, uh, this, this Magic Arm is fantastic. You know, I can, I can put it in basically any position I want. Um, so like with that top handle, I'll often point the monitor up like that, okay? And then I'm able to hold it down low and I can get those shots at a you know, waist level or even lower and having the monitor pointed straight up at me, fantastic. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love having it on this newer Magic Arm. These Magic Arms run, I believe, 22-ish dollars for a set of two. Um, and that's absolutely worth it. I recommend that you have a couple of these because um, you find yourselves, you, yourself using them for all kinds of things. I could take a little light and put it up here. It's just a fantastic uh, little tool to have on any camera rig. Okay, so definitely recommend you get a Magic Arm. The Magic Arm is connected via just one of these little uh, uh, 15 millimeter rod uh, little, little grommets. Uh, and I definitely, uh, you know, find that a good way to go. Um, but okay, so... That's the Atomos Shinobi. Again, love it on the newer arm. And I've got, you know, of course, my follow focus matte box, which we've all gone over. But now let's kind of go to the piece de resistance of this rig. It is the power. Now, the Pocket 4K is notoriously bad at power management. Yes, uh, having used this camera for a while now, several, several months, um, you know, I say a while is relative, um, but having used this camera for a good little while now, I can tell you, it's battery life sucks. <laughs> it is terrible. It is absolutely horrible on this camera. I cannot tell you that enough. Okay, but with this rig, that's completely negated. It is 100% a great battery life on this camera with this setup, okay? I have got here a Sony NPL, uh, NPF battery, um, which is on an ND Pro plate which I believe is about 80 bucks. Again, prices on the screen, because I don't remember exactly. Um, but that goes straight through this power cable right into the two pin Limo adapter. Uh, and the, the battery life on this camera rig is actually really, really daggum good. Really daggum good. Um, I'm talking like two and a half hours or so on this battery. Now again, I know that there are cameras that can beat that out with like 10 hour battery life and all that kind of stuff, but when you've got a couple of these NPF batteries, which are relatively cheap considering, that's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Okay, so having these camera, uh, these batteries going directly into the camera and it, on this rig, I've got a newer uh, 15 millimeter uh, little plate here. And this thing is super cool. It's just, uh, here, I'll try not to stress it too much, but there we go. So this little plate here is fantastic. I don't remember what it's uh, actually called, um, but it's basically meant to be upside down like this, and then you can uh, put like a tripod quick release plate right onto it. And uh, I'm just simply using that as my plate for this Indie Pro um, battery holder. And very fantastic. Um, something that's super cool about this too, there is a tap out, uh, a barrel connector uh, power out um, that you can use to say like power monitor or something like that. Uh, I'm actually going to look into, that might be kind of cool. It'd be cool to look into um, getting a power out directly to the Atomos Shinobi. 
That way I don't have to have multiple batteries. Be nice, you know, a single battery run the whole thing. Um, something else that's really nice about this. Okay, here's, this is very important. This is why I recommend going for something like an NPF battery plate. Um, that does not go into dummy battery. You may, you may notice that I'm not going into a dummy battery into the bottom of the camera, which a lot of people do. I'm going directly into the two pin. Here's why I recommend that. Well, let me turn on the camera. Okay, so we power up the camera. Go ahead and turn on the Atomo Shinobi. All right, so I've now got the camera turned on and boom, my battery's dead. What am I gonna do? Well, say I'm in the middle of a shot on a tripod. Well, I can remove it very uh, carefully. I'm still recording. I'm still going because I've got the battery, the Canon LPE6 battery in the camera, and then I can grab a new battery, replace it, good to go. Having that ability is super cool, and the Atomos Shinobi is running off of its own battery. So really, battery life on this camera is technically infinite because once this battery dies, grab another one, take it out, put it on, never have to reboot the camera. That's, that to me is a winner. That is absolutely awesome to have. So that basically is my rig. It is an absolutely incredible setup and I really do love it. And I use it every day at work. Again, it's not this exact camera because I've got basically a duplicate of this at work. And I've brought this camera in to be a secondary camera on a couple of different shoots and it's been absolutely fantastic. I use it every single day and I can not get enough of it. It really is a fantastic rig. The whole price of this rig comes around to Again, adding it up in post. <laughs> but it's not at all bad for the price. Now, biggest downside of this rig, one would be balance. It really is not that well balanced. When you start holding it down low, it does wanna go a little bit to the side a little bit. So, you know, I'll keep one hand on a handle a little bit and then one hand on the top handle. And at that case, it's not too bad. Uh, not too bad at all. Um, so yeah, the balance is not great. The weight is fantastic. It's really not that heavy, but my biggest complaint with the Pocket 4K, okay, this is where I do get it a little bit into a review-ish of the Pocket 4K. It is not good on the IR cut situation. Okay, so I was filming a promo the other day, completely in sunlight, and I had to use NDs on the Sigma uh, Contemporary Primes. And I was filming with some police officers and their uniforms went like completely magenta, purplish, reddish color. You know, what happens when you don't have an IR cut filter? And it made me go, okay, I've got to do something about that. So in the future, um, like very near future, I wanna be getting an IR cut filter with a couple of step down rings and stuff. That way that that can basically be negated. Cause that is my biggest complaint about this camera. My biggest complaint is not battery life. It's not, you know, there's not much else besides that. My biggest complaint is the lack of an IR cut filter. If they could have just included that, I would have paid 1500 for this camera um, or 1600. Like it would have been so much better to just have the IR cut filter on there. Um, Cause that's really my only serious complaint about this camera. Again, it can be negated by having a, you know, an IR cut filter that screws on the front of the lens, but having it built into the camera would be super nice. And I know there's the one that goes between the lens and the sensor, but those are super expensive. Um, but that might be an option that I end up going for. Um, but yeah, this, this rig is absolutely fantastic. I absolutely love it. I cannot tell you enough that it is a great setup for the price. Well guys, that really wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you tuning in to Premiere Prep for this. Again, like I said, we're gonna be having more episodes in 2020. Next episode, I wanna be going over the GVM 800D RGB lights, which I'm actually using to color the background a little bit. Uh, I am loving them so far, but there are a couple of downsides and that will be a legit review. Um, and I'm definitely uh, hoping to get that out uh, pretty soon. So I appreciate you guys very much for tuning in. Make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, all the different things. Uh, and I really appreciate you guys being here for Premiere Prep in 2020. That really wraps it up. Remember to live your life one frame at a time and I will catch you next time. Have I discovered, have I discovered the 4K, bleh. have I discovered the holy grail of pocket 4K camera rigs? Hey, Boo Boo Bear. Hey, Boo Boo Bear. Let's talk about the Pocket 4K. I don't know, Yogi. The red fanboys ain't gonna like it. I don't care. <laughs>